now we'll start looking at um, rods and reels and lines that you need for basic bait fishing for pike. So um, rods, carp rods, ideal, absolutely fine, nothing wrong with a carp rod. Um, I've caught tons and tons of pike on carp rods. So if you've got a carp rod, um, then that would be great. Really you don't want to use, or I, personally I wouldn't use anything less than about a two and a half pound test curve. Um, pike are quite a, a strong fish, so you want a bit of backbone in, the, in your rod for playing the pike. But also because you're going to be casting out for some he fairly hefty baits at times. Um, if you're casting out say a mackerel with uh, a three ounce lead, then you're going to struggle on, on much less than a uh, two and a half pound test curve rod. Uh, I haven't got my, my new rods with me at the moment, so I'll just show you. This is one of the rods I've been using for quite some time. This one is a 12 foot. It's a Fox Warrior XT. It's one of the old models. Uh, two and three quarter pound test curve. This is a two piece rod, um, which makes it makes it good for storing away um, when you want to you know put your put your uh, rods in the car or and then move to a different fishing spot then uh, a two piece rod is ideal because you can obviously keep your uh, keep your rig intact you don't have to break the rig down cut the line and all that kind of thing you can leave it set up so a two piece 12 foot rod of somewhere around two and a half pound to three and a half pound test curve it's going to serve you perfectly. One thing you do want to watch out for is that if you're going to be using braided line, like uh, I use braided line for almost all of my pike fishing now, um, then you need to make sure that the rod you're using has a guide like this, a ceramic type guide. If it's got the plastic one in there, then not such a good idea to be using um, to be using braided line because that will cut into the uh, the, the plastic line guides. So, um, if your rod has plastic in the uh, in the line guides, then you're much better off using monofilament line. Um, but if you've got these sort of ceramic type ones, then um, brilliant. You can use uh, you can use braid reels. Now, this one here is a Shimano uh, Super Bait Runner. Uh, it's an XTEA 10,000 size reel. Um, it's a fixed spool reel. Uh, it has the bait runner option on here. <clears throat> now, we almost never fish off a bait runner when you're fishing for pike. Most of the time, or nearly all the time, you'll be fishing with the uh, with the bail arm open, um, and so that the uh, the pike can freely take line. Um, but it is nice to have that option obviously this is a pretty standard carp reel so once again if you've been doing doing a bit of carp fishing then you'll probably have something like this um, personally I prefer the 10,000 sized reel I find that that covers me for all the well pretty much all the fishing I do I, I use these for carp fishing and, and for pike fishing and you know so um, it's easy enough to change the spools on these. If you want, you can just push this button in, and uh, the spool pops off like so. So, you, if you want to, uh, say you're going uh, carp fishing and you want monofil monofilament line on there, then you can just load up another spool with your monofilament line. Um, so, anything I use this 10,000 size one. Really, anything sort of six thousand up, right up to your your big pit reel will be absolutely fine. Um, I've even caught pike on a five thousand size reel with absolutely no problems. One important point I do want to make about reels is that when you as you start fishing for pike, you want to make sure that you get a reel that has a free spool facility or a clutch facility. So that means that when you're playing a fish and the fish takes line rapidly or it takes off rapidly it can pull line off the spool of the reel so so that the, the reel will spin 
Um, that's quite important, really. Oh, it's very important. Uh, the Shimano Type 1 has this rear drag system. They call it a rear drag, which is um, operated from this little fella here. If you turn it clockwise, that makes it tighter. Anti-clockwise makes it, makes it looser. Some reels will have a, a, front, a front drag, which is located on here, and the, you, you've turned this in order to make it tighter or looser as you're playing the fish, or, uh, or as you see fit. Now, um, yeah, so just make sure that the reel you use has that facility, and then uh, you can't go far wrong. Lines. There has been a lot of debate in the past about lines, uh, fishing line for pike. Um, if you've been carp fishing and you're using 15 pound monofilament line on your spools of your reels, absolutely fine. But we're talking about bait fishing for pike here. Just the rule I stick to is I never use less than 15 pound mono for bait fishing and uh, I never use less than 50 pound braid. 50 pound braid might sound ridiculously strong to people who haven't fished for pike before but it has a very thin diameter so it doesn't cause you any problems there and also braid doesn't have the abrasion resistance so if you're casting out and your line is, is laying over rocks or snags or whatever it may be, then you really do need to step it up that far with the braid. So the rule I use is never less than 50 pound for braid, never less than 15 pound for mono. My favorite line choice is um, Power Pro Braid. Power Pro Braid is not cheap, but it, in my opinion, it's the best you can buy. Um, I buy mine this 65 pound braid, power pro braid, in 1500 yard spools. This is the moss green one and you can see there it has the diameter of a of a 16 pound line, a normal 16 pound monofilament. Um, so if you want to fish with braid don't use less than uh, 50 pound and uh, buy something decent because it's not cheap and um, you don't want to be losing fish, you don't want it snapping and things like that. Um, I always go by um, a little saying that I quite like, buy cheap, pay twice. So always buy the best you can afford. Always go for quality. Um, other than that, there's a monofilament line. Um, just don't use less than 15 pounds. So, you know, I, I use 15 pound mono. If I'm fishing with that, 65 pound Power Pro braid. If I'm fishing with that, if you decide to buy Power Pro braid, it comes with a very handy little booklet here, which um, shows you all the different things you need to know about tying it onto a spool, um, how to fit it to the spool, and and things like that. Um, the one, th another thing you want to remember if you're going to use braid on your on your spool, is that you'll need some kind of backing. So you want some kind of line, like a, a monofil monofilament line, ideally, that you um, you put a few turns on the uh, on the spool first, so that the uh, so that the braid won't slip on the reel, which is a possibility when using braid. Um, the other thing you can do is use a, a tape that goes on the spool. Personally, I prefer to use the um, to use the monofilament, so I'll get I'll tie my uh, my monofilament line onto the spool um, using an arbor knot, which is dead easy to tie. It's just like a it's an overhand loop. Uh, it's an overhand knot with another one in the end. It's dead easy. If you get one of these with your power probe braid, it shows you exactly how to do it. There, do that. Put a few a few turns of that on your on your spool. And then you can tie a braid to your mono using this little system here. It's called a uni to uni splice or knot, um, also known as the Grinner knot. Um, I'll probably show you in uh, a bit later on 
how to tie a Griner knot. It is very, very useful knot to know how to tie, and it's the one that I use for for when I'm fishing with braid, for connecting the braid to your terminal tackle. Um, it's a very strong knot, so I'll probably show you that.